Chicago school. It's just a heartbreaking situation for so many residents here. People not knowing the fate of their family members, their loved ones. Communication systems are down on the west side of the island. 911 isn't operable. Cell service isn't possible. Right now we're standing at a roadblock on the road to Lahaina. This is one of the hardest hit areas. Right now residents aren't being let in and they won't be let in for the foreseeable future. And evacuations are still ongoing. People being bussed out the fire zone. This, as the death toll from these fires continues to rise. Hawaii oh, Congresswoman Kanani Souza says most residents didn't have any warning of the fire. You know, as far as the warnings go, there was a red flag warning in effect for Maui, for especially that side of the island. But even though we are not strangers to natural disasters here in Hawaii, a lot of residents did not know what a red flag warning was. And I think that there was a lack of communication, whether it's because the
August 11. August the 11th. It is on this Friday. We appreciate you joining us today. It's Trivia Friday. I'm Tim Wildman with Ed Battagliano. Good morning, Ed. Good morning. JJ Jasper, proud of Owensburg, I mean, Owensburg, Kentucky. How you doing, JJ? Great to be here. Great to be back. And uh, the great American road trip was completed safe and sound, right? Yes, sir. Absolutely. Thanks to the prayers of our listeners, we drove through 24 states. I drove 3,482 miles, and we went up through New England. Who's, who's counting? Yeah, but who's counting? <laughs> Ten hotel rooms, one Airbnb, a cabin in the woods in Maine. It was historic, patriotic, and we just saw it all. Williamsburg, Jamestown, Arlington Cemetery, Ford's Theater, Gettysburg, Boston, Philadelphia. The only little hiccup was uh, when Ed's cousin tried to sell us a fake Rolex in an alley in Boston. Hey, right. those, those may be fake, but they're high quality. <laughs> <laughs> hey, thank you to Allison Wildman. Yeah. She mapped out Washington, D.C. for us, and we would be roaming around. Uh, boy, you and Allison saved the day giving us a schedule because you take those uh, spiritual heritage tours yeah. and do such a great job of that. We, we had a blast. We didn't have a flat tire. I mean, it was just a wonderful trip. I don't recommend to go that hard for that many days, but it was a it was a real blessing. Hey, Amen. Well, good to have you back. Ed, Ed what's the uh, rules today? It's first time callers today, so that means if you have never been on the air with us here on Trivia Friday, today could be your day. The number to call to get on this here program, 888-589-8840. What's the eight, number, Ed? 888 888- 589-8840. First time callers. Uh, callers do need to be 11 years old or older. We don't have a cap on the upper age limit. You're 120. Feel free to call in on your rotary phone. <laughs> and uh, anyway, first time callers. And uh, we're going to wait to hear from you. What else, Ed? Well, if there is a mystery question. Mystery question. And if. Uh, Someone calls in and answers that question. They hear this sound. Oh, love the cowbell. Love the cowbell right. shall ring. It shall. And all the world will know. <laughs> that you have won an AFR travel mug. Did you have any travel mugs with you, JJ, when you went? I wish we had travel mugs. Hey, I want to encourage people to go to JJ Jasper Official on Facebook. Our daughter, Maddie, she did a little video uh, compilation of each day. A lot, a lot funny, and you can kind of follow the trip, scroll back just a little bit, and I think you'll laugh. A little music behind it and showing all of our antics. But, no, we should have had a travel bag. We had to stop enough time. Our driver was a senior citizen, so he has to <laughs> take a lot of bathroom breaks. Yeah. So, uh, yeah, we, we, but we had a big time. All right. Trivia Friday it is on American Family Radio. Uh, it gave you the number, first-time callers only today. And uh, we, uh, let's see, any, anything else? It seems like there's something else we failed to mention, but I guess is that is The that mystery it? question, you were holding the tumbler, yeah. somebody lands on the mystery question, answers it correctly, you hear the sound, and you win the tumbler. Well, we can let them know that they can watch the live stream if they want. Yeah. On Facebook, you just search for today's issues. Mm-hmm. That is normally the uh, name of the show, Monday through Thursday. Uh, click through. You can watch the live stream or you can go to streaming.afa.net. That's our own streaming platform, streaming.afa.net. All right, Ed, what, what, uh, what questions have you chosen today? I have three just magnificent questions. Magnificent. They are they're just magnificent. All right, here, here are my three questions. Where is the sea route or sea route, depending on what part of the country you're from? Where is the sea route called Drake's Passage? Where is the sea route called Drake's Passage? That's in Power to the Caribbean, isn't it? <laughs> Pirates, that's, that's right. Sorry, I, you, you guessed it. Arr, the Caribbean. You can only make it through Drake's Passage. Arr. Uh, only here's your cracker. <laughs> Second question, with the ability to travel up to 35 miles per hour, what is the fastest flying insect in the world? With the ability to travel up to 35 miles per hour, 
That's almost as fast as I can run. It, escaping's pointless. And, and, <laughs> and is raid is raid effective on that animal? Uh, raid would be raid would be hour. effective. I don't think you, you'd have to be a gunslinger to be able to draw <laughs> quick enough to keep it from getting on you. <laughs> what is the fastest flying insect in the world? Did you just say? You said uh, uh, I said escape is pointless. escape is pointless. <laughs> Huh? Just uh, sit there and take it. <laughs> don't Whatever take, it does. Here, don't take that stick and swat at that hive. Do you do you realize what? Oh, run, everybody. <laughs> You're going to have to run up yeah. to 35 miles an hour. That's right. Third question. What book of the Bible states that many antichrists have already come into the world? What book of the Bible states that many antichrists have already come into the world? That's what I've got. Here's what I've got. First question, what city is overlooked by a large statue named Christ the Redeemer? What city is overlooked by a huge statue named Christ the Redeemer? Second question, what Philadelphia building appears on the back of the U.S. $100 bill? What Philadelphia building is on the back of the U.S. $100 bill? Third question, true or false? The Chinese government owns nearly every panda on Earth, and they rent them out to places around the world, making a million dollars a year off of each panda. Is that true or false? Chinese government own all the pandas. They rent them out to zoos and different places around the world. They make a million dollars a year off of each panda. True or false? Mm. Is that it? That's it. All right, here are my three questions. What four countries uh, make up the United Kingdom? We all hear the expression UK a lot, right? Right. Uh, UK. What, but what four countries make up the UK? My second question, a Bible question. Uh, Jerusalem is the city most mentioned in the Bible. What's the second most mentioned city in the Bible? Jerusalem is by far the most mentioned town in the Bible. What's the second most mentioned town in the Bible? And thirdly, uh, what was the most popular name for male babies in the U.S. between the years 1961 and 1998? And I was shocked to find that this name was, it was un an unbreakable chain. Between, you mean every year? The every years you just yes, yes, yes. I, I was stunned. From 1961 to 1998, this name was the number one name for male babies in the U.S. Unbroken. And why not? Rufus, it just flows <laughs> off your, it rolls off your tongue. It just flows. A girl or a boy baby. Rufus. Well, I'm not a biologist. Are there so about three questions? Let's go. Okay. All right, we go, we're going to start off in our home state, Mississippi, and Dana is on the line. Dana, welcome to Trivia Friday. Hello. Hi, Dana, how are you doing today? I'm doing good, how are you? I'm doing well myself. Where are you calling from? Well, I'm from Tickelow. Okay, awesome. I, I, I think I know some of you guys. We may go to church together. That's all people need to know, Dane. Uh, <laughs> right there. You can just stop right there. Uh, okay, Tim. Yeah. I'm going to ask an answer, if that's okay. Uh, yes, ma'am. Uh, ask sure an is. answer. Go ahead. Which one do you want to answer? Tim, the city, the second city, mostly, what was the question? The question is, uh, Jerusalem is the uh, most mentioned city in the Bible. What is the second most mentioned city in the Bible? Can I ask you a question before I answer your question? Yes. Is it another word for Jerusalem? No, no it's not. Okay. It's a separate place altogether. Uh, yeah, Jerusalem, by far and away the most mentioned uh, town, city in the Bible. But what is, what is the second most mentioned? Oh gosh. I. Nazareth. Nazareth is number six. That is a very good guess. Okay. Good job. 
Uh, okay. I'll just say this. Jerusalem is mentioned 811 times in the scripture. Wow. wow. That's Old Testament, Old Testament combined. Nazareth is mentioned 29 times. So, but it's still number six in the most mentioned town in the Bible. That's a great question. Dana, you have helped narrow it down yeah. for other folks. Nazareth, good guess, but it's number six. Yeah. Your, yeah, what's your question for us, Dana? Okay, so I still have a question. What would Moses' two sons say? I don't know how to say Moses' children. Moses' two sons' name. What was Moses' two sons' name? Was it one uh, mm -hmm. name like is it Zipporah? Or something like that, or was that his uh, his, his, his wife? wife name? I think. Yeah. Uh, Two sons of Moses. I don't know, but I got I got to tell you, you talk about having big sandals to fill. Who's your dad? <laughs> yeah. Moses. Well, it is. Well, I guess I'm not going to match up to that. His uncle Aaron, his aunt. I, mean, I know that his uncle and aunt's name, uh, Miriam and Aaron. Yeah. Were the two boys. Aunt and uncle, but I don't know. I can't remember the name. I'm trying to think. Where is that mentioned? It's it's right there. They he left them behind for a little bit. Was doing everything as a lawgiver and a judge, and then he sent for his family. Got gotcha. Talked to his. We don't know, Diana. What's the answer? Okay. Well, good guesses. His first son was Zipporah, and his second son was Eliezer. So Eliezer. Okay. That's still a popular name in Jewish. Um, yeah. Life today. Ellie, how do you spell that? Ellie? Right. Eliezer. With an E-R. Like Eliezer. With yeah. an E-R. Well, I'll, 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 let me tell you something. That uh, Gershom, uh, he went on to have a really good business making pickles. Because I, I love those Gershom <laughs> pickles. <laughs> those are great. Real real crispy if you get them in the refrigerator. And, yeah, and that lineage is quite <laughs> dark. That's right. <laughs> hey, sorry, sorry, Dana. <laughs> Have a great weekend. Thanks for listening to AFR. The two sons of, of Moses. Moses. Ele Ele Eleazar. Eleazar. Gershom. And Gershom. Wow. We talk okay. about living in somebody's shadow. Yes. We know Moses. You know, everybody does. Right. Then you don't hear about his two sons. Yeah. Fail, yeah. fail to live up. Yeah. Well, that was our choice. Live choice. <laughs> <Yeah. laughs> Uh, huh? <laughs> you know. That's right. They right. could have made a name for themselves more than just good pickles. <laughs> you know, that's, uh, you, you got to give 110%. Uh, go ahead, next call. All they needed was a good graduation speech. Right. Yeah. They would have they soared. Put your back against the stars. <laughs> 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 All right. We go to Texas and Julia. Julia. You think you want to be. <laughs> You grow up. That's true. Except you, Tim. <laughs> <laughs> You're kind of limited. That's what my third grade teacher told me. I would not aim high if I were you, Tim. <laughs> Disappointment can be a terrible thing. Average needs to be your goal. <laughs> hey, the world needs average people, too. Otherwise, how will the exceptional people know they're exceptional? Sure. Got to be somebody under there. Yeah. Who's next? All right, we go to Texas, and Julian is on the line. Julian, welcome to Trivia Friday. Hello, can you hear me? We sure can. Good, strong voice there, Julian. Okay, I'm 12 years old, flying from Texas. Okay. All right, where are you calling from, Julian? Uh, Garland, Texas. It's uh, close to Saxby. Dallas, Dallas, Fort Worth area. Yes, uh, yes. Uh -huh. uh, Garland, yeah. I've heard of it. Absolutely. Sound, Julian sounds like a sharp kid. I think he's gonna. I think he's gonna excel here. Bring it. Yeah, he's gonna bring it. You want to ask, answer, or do both, Julian? Oh, I want to do both. Of course, I knew it. Which one do you want to try to answer? Uh, I want to answer the one about the standards. Yeah. All right. Hey, this is a true or false question. Here's the question. <laughs> The Chinese government owns nearly every panda on Earth, and they rent them to places around the world, making a million dollars a year off of each panda. Is that true or false? It's true. Julian, it is 100% true. Wow. Wow. Go, Where'd Julian. you go, Julian? There's a deal. I think I'm in the wrong business. <laughs> I need to get me a mare panda and a stallion panda. And start making pandas and renting them out. Baby pandas. Baby pandas. But let me give you a little, a little more backstory, Julian. So the Chinese government owns nearly every panda that is alive on Earth, as we've mentioned, rent them out to various places around the world. 
various places. I would just assume zoos, but then I guess maybe some casinos or something like that. They make a million dollars a year off each panda. Additionally, any baby pandas that are born while they're being rented, they charge you $400,000 for the baby being born. Oh, man. And so you don't get to keep the baby, I'm assuming, but you, you, they charge you $400,000 or $1,000 because a little baby panda was born while you were written that dude. Wow. That, that is... Uh, that, that not is, the dude, I guess. The, the you, know the, you know those balloons they sent over here? <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I remember that. They're just getting out now places. One of those pictures had a panda hanging from it. <laughs> they were delivering it. They probably no, it was an ad. It was an ad, like uh, Eat It Joe's uh, <laughs> Seafood. Uh, a panda meat. bear picture on the side of that balloon. That's right. If you've got, you got one panda point, bears for sale. If you've got 1.3 yeah. million people in your country, you got to right. find a lot of ways to earn a lot of side hustles. Hey, Julie, were you guessing or had you heard that? Yeah, well, that was good. Hey, what's your question for us? Um, well, I'm a sports fanatic. I'm a sports nerd. Um, I, I don't know if you're familiar with Tech Strangers. Yes, we are. I'm, I've got two okay. uh, t- uh, sports fanatics sitting right next to me. Okay, I wanted to know who, or, or, I want to ask y'all, who is leading the Tech Strangers right now in our judge? Uh, his first, I don't know his last name, his first name is Gershom, but, uh... <laughs> oh, you got your, you got your... Uh, yeah, you got your, you got your... You millennium. got your panda question <laughs> mixed up. You got your, and your millennial. Yeah. Millennial. Yeah. Hey, uh, now don't. I'm going to say, Julian, I, I, I do, uh, like, hope my team, the Red Sox, I uh, hope they do well this year, but I do not follow baseball until the playoffs. Um, yeah. So I, I don't know the. Well, we're pretty you know, excited about Nolan Ryan. You're probably too young to remember him. Uh, okay. Okay. Go ahead. Okay, it's Joey Garcia. He's a rookie that we just picked up last year. Well, well, half the major leagues named Garcia now. <laughs> uh, I mean, uh, am I right? Wow, that's pretty impressive. Yeah, yeah, I used to keep up with. Uh, Major League Baseball. Oh, yeah. So you knew the stats. I, I really did. thought you'd come, come through yeah, well, that. Uh, about 10 years ago, there's only so much his brain can That's right. take in, so you're going to have to yeah, pick and choose. I, I listen every Friday to y'all's show. I love yeah. it. Oh, well, thank you very pretty. much, Julian. Right. Yeah, how are, the, how are the Texas Rangers doing this year? Are they, uh, are they in the playoff contention? Oh, yeah. I mean, we're here. We're doing really good today. Yeah, awesome. Well, much happiness to you and Ranger fans. Yeah, have a great weekend. Thank you and your family for listening. Is that it? That yeah. was his okay. question. Thank you, Julia. All right, we need to repeat our questions, fellas, quickly. All right, here are my three. Where is the sea route called Drake's Passage? Second question, with the ability to travel up to 35 miles per hour, what is the fastest flying insect in the world? And third question, what book of the Bible states that many antichrists have already come into the world. What city is overlooked by a large statue named Christ the Redeemer? Second question, what Philadelphia building appears on the back of the U.S. $100 bill? Third question, I'll add one. This is just a little bit lengthy. She was born in 1860. She grew up in a time when a woman being a sharpshooter was virtually unheard of. But against all odds, she became one of the most famous American sharpshooters of all time. Name her. She's a household name, you know, Wild West, out there being a sharpshooter. So uh, that Betty Crocker, she had, she wore more than one hat. <laughs> I'll tell you that. She could make up some bean biscuits, but Go out there. you don't want to cross it all those biscuits up in the air, pull out that revolver, <laughs> shoot it twice before it hit the ground. That's right. I saw the, I saw the video. <laughs> It was on YouTube. Yeah. Betty Crocker, the sharpshooter. Huh? That's right. All right, Tim. All right. My, my questions are, the in the uh, Bible, the uh, city of Jerusalem is uh, by far and away the most mentioned. I want to know the second most mentioned city in the Bible. And this isn't obscure. This is, you'll, you'll know it when you when I give you the answer. Now, the city of Nazareth was a guess made by an earlier caller. 
uh, and I think Dana, and um, that is number six most mentioned city in the Bible. My second question is, what was the most popular name for male babies in the U.S. consecutively from the year 1961 to 1998? And JJ's got it. He got JJ got it. You want to go in there and call us? <laughs> JJ, go in another room and call well, us. Well, now, I want to offer we'll so with a travel mug. I want to offer so many tips. I was going to say on your cities, uh, I guarantee you they have a Dollar General in that town. <laughs> That's right. Well, they did right. back then. This name was the number one name in for U.S. babies uh, from '61 to '98. It just that just that's sport, incredible. Bored me. Yeah, yeah. All right, my final question: What four countries make up what's called the United Kingdom? What four countries make up what's called the United Kingdom? Back to the phones, Ed. All right, and we are going to go to back to Texas, and Mike is on the line. Now, folks, Mike. Might not be a first-time caller, but he was left over from last week. So right out of the fridge, right out of the fridge, leftovers. Mike, welcome to Trivia Friday. Well, golly, appreciate that. <laughs> Mike, don't feel uh, bad about that. Do? Leftover pizza, the day-old pizza and day-old wedding cake is some of the best stuff you can put in your mouth. That's right. Oh, I know. I like it better than when you first get it. Yeah. Hey, Mike, ask answer or do both. <laughs> uh, I'll answer. Which one do you feel confident about? Now, I wanted to try Tim's question about the uh, the most popular male name. Uh, yes, from 1961 to 1998, uh, in all those years in a row, this was number one. What is it? I think it's John. John. Uh, John is right up there, like top five, but uh, it's it's not number one. Hey, you helped, you, Mike. You helped eliminate. Uh, you helped to make it easier for the next person. But that would have been actually, uh, uh, Mike. John was well, Mike. Was my guess Tim. on that? No, it's Tim. I heard it say Tim. Uh, after I was born, it started going down. Broke the mold. It was going toward number one, and then it started <laughs> dropping like a rock. <laughs> I don't know. Uh, uh, t- John, uh, I uh, uh, Timothy is it's, it's in the good, top it, twenty. It, it, I bet. Top twenty. Yeah, uh, uh, I forgot. Well, I'll have to look. But um, anyway, all right. What's your question for us, brother Mike? I didn't have one. I just no. I was just kidding you when I said that about Tim because like, it was your question. That's yeah, right. Yeah. yeah. I was like, you know. where, where, so where do you, where, where do you live? Where are you calling from? Toledo. Toledo. That's right by Temple and uh, between Temple and Austin. So, oh yeah, 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 yeah. So yeah. Mike, let me get this straight. You've been waiting since right. last week, and you couldn't come up with a question for us. I need help. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> All right, Mike, go to your go to your cupboard, get a mug, and send it to us. Okay, get a, get a travel mug. You send you send it to us. So this is a travel mug. Mike, Mike thank, thank you. Thank you for listening to AFR. Have a great weekend. That's your penance. Isn't that what it's called? <laughs> yeah. Penance. Penance. All right, we're going to take a short time out right here. We'll be back with more of Trivia Friday on American Family Radio. Right. Tim, Ed, and JJ, we thank you for listening to American Family Radio. More to come. Just a minute. Bishop E.W. Jackson to leave AFR and run for president. Our loss could be a blessing to the nation, but it leaves a hole in our programming. Well, here's our answer. He comes from the Emerald City. He's not a wizard, but some might call him a whiz. He brings a biblical perspective to things we're seeing in the world. He's a follower of Jesus and a leader among men. Coming soon, it's a disciple's view with Todd Herman. Weekdays at noon central on American Family Radio. And my father, your great-grandfather, fought in World War II. Really? He was a gunner on the big ship out in the Pacific Ocean. Wow. Your great-grandmother did her part, too. Was she on a ship? Oh, no. She stayed back home. She and a lot of her friends worked really hard in a factory because the men had gone off to war. 
And they held scrap metal drives to help in the war effort. The folks back home were heroes too. Here at the American Family Association, we consider you the heroes back home. As you fulfill your responsibility of caring for your family day to day, your partnership with us is crucial as we fight the enemies of freedom in America. Thank you for your commitment to the American Family Association. Grandpa, what's a scrap metal drive? Let's get some cookies and I'll tell you all about it. I'm Todd Starnes. Stand by for news and commentary next. Uh, my goal as a teacher is, is to impart knowledge and then be able then for them to take it and turn it into wisdom. As we teach, I think, okay, five years down the road, how will the material that I am teaching them really affect their lives and their careers? Hi, Todd Starnes here. Truett offers biblically-centered degree programs. Check out truett.edu slash Starnes. Residents of Waverly, Tennessee had only a few minutes warning before a wall of water flooded their town. Shane Gannon and his wife Myra lived in a Victorian house filled with antiques. He was awakened by something that was bumping into the side of his house. He looked outside and discovered it was his Chrysler 300, now floating in the front yard. Shane waded through waters that looked like chocolate milk, helping his disabled wife get to a higher place in the house. He then turned his attention to saving the antiques, but suddenly he heard a word from God. He left the antiques and instead grabbed the family Bible. The floodwaters rose four feet high in the Gannon house. They lost just about everything on that horrible day except for that Bible. Shane and Myra were among the lucky ones. They survived the floods and now counting their blessings, naming them one by one every day. I'm Todd Stearns. Search me, God, and know my heart. Test me. Know my anxious thoughts. See if there is any offensive way in me and lead me in the way everlasting. Psalm 139, verses 23 to 24. American Family Radio. It was, and that was... Uh, based in the City of Angels in Los Angeles back when there was Law and Order. <laughs> That's long gone. That was what you really think, Dad. Hey, is that the one that said ju the facts, just the facts? No, that man. was uh, uh, Dragnet. Yeah. Dragnet. Just the facts, ma'am. Yeah. Uh, and that was, uh, I think, was that an FBI show? Mm, it was. I think that was the L.A. detective show. Oh, it was? I think. I don't. I, I just remember the two guys. And Adam, Adam, Adam 12, that would have been, gosh. Late 70s, maybe? No, that would have been probably 72 to 75, 74 oh, right I just, there. I just appreciated his, his, I gust, he his gusto and all of his exuberance whenever he'd do his line about. Oh, you know, Dragnet? Yeah. How, tell, how's it go, Ed? You remember how. Oh, just, just that. Just the facts, ma'am. I thought facts. I said this happened in the city of... So, oh, yeah, that was the that was the introduction. Yeah. What was the answer, Brent? Uh, September 68 to May 1975. Wow. Out of 12. Okay. You got the end year, right? Seven-year run right there. Right. Yeah, I don't remember that. If you could only remember who hit RBIs, Mark Rangers. <laughs> it was right. Martin Milner. And uh, who, who was the other guy? The uh, That's deep trivia. Uh, all right, Trivia Friday is on American Family Radio. Tim, Ed, and JJ, back to the phones, Ed. All right, and we're going back to Texas. I'm telling you, Texas is representing today. Chris is on the line. Chris, welcome to Trivia Friday. Hey, good morning, fellas. Can you hear me all right? Sure yes, can. Sir. Where do you live in Texas? Good. Abilene. Abilene. Uh, yeah. Yes, sir. A lot of, a lot of great folks and listeners. Great there. area. I lived there one winter. Loved yes, your sir. town. That, absolutely. I tell you what, it doesn't feel like winter out here now. <laughs> <laughs> Quite the opposite, right? <laughs> exactly. Texas, exactly. Texas has been on fire Jay, Jay, this gonna, summer. Jay, uh, I was just saying, Texas has been on fire this this uh, summer. Very hot. Yeah. It has, it has. It's really hot down here. It was 118 degrees down in Odessa area yesterday. You mean actual temperature? Yes, and it's what my pickup was showing, 118 degrees. We were just south of Odessa yesterday working. Wow, wow. Well, I, 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 I don't yeah. doubt it. I saw a picture the other day. The ice cream truck at Abilene melted. 
the whole thing just <laughs> right there right there on the street it was funnier in my head <laughs> all right you want to ask good night it's 109 straight up we're chris in abilene today wow that's chris i heard about that water buffalo at your petting zoo where he evaporated i'm so sorry to hear that hey dude you should have learned from me, you Jay, on that one. Ask, <laughs> ask and answer. Right. Chris, th those last two and jokes answer. were so bad that Chris wants to move on. Yeah, he's telling us we better move on, gentlemen. <laughs> All right, uh, what, what question do you want to answer, Chris? Okay, well, Julian got the question that I wanted to answer about the panda. So I... Look, JJ, I heard you mention that question about two uh, two and a half hours ago. Hey, I was listening to AFR, and I heard you come on and say that you're going to. So I started doing research on that. You were ready. Day. I was trying to give these guys a heads up. We got a talk side, a music side, and a music side, and I gave these guys a little bit of heads up on some questions. Well, good for you, Chris. So you knew it really was yeah. the truth. We're in the wrong business, buddy. Let's get us a, a boy and girl. Right, I know panda. It. Well, hey, yeah, what's, what question do you feel good about hey, now? Hey, can boy pandas get pregnant? No. Uh, okay. I, I just saw no. that in the boy news the other day. Get pregnant. That they could they, 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 Well, I'm not a biologist, so yeah, I can't tell you. <laughs> anyway, go ahead. Yeah. There's a lot of weird stuff. There's a lot of weird stuff in the news these days. Isn't that the truth? Hey, which question do you feel comfortable or confident about? I think I want to answer the one. Are you breaking up a little bit? Can you repeat that? Which question? I think I want to answer the question about the sharpshooter. Oh, here it is. She was born in 1860, grew up in a time when being a sharpshooter for a woman was unheard of, but she became one of the most famous American sharpshooters of all time. Name her. Is it Annie Oakley? Annie Oakley. Her real name was Phoebe Ann Mosey. But she was Annie Oakley, and I was afraid somebody might mention Calamity Jane. Yeah. Calamity Jane was another one who actually toured with Wild Bill Hickok in the uh, in the uh, Wild in the you know, Wild West show. But it was Annie Oakley, the, the best woman's sharpshooter in America. You never hear about the the girl who finished second. <laughs> That's right. <laughs> and, you know what I'm saying? Yeah. But it was actually Mary Tyler Moore. <laughs> She went on later to be an actress. Uh, oh, my. She, she finished second to uh, finished Annie second Oakley. Annie Oakley. Hey, way to go there. Uh, what's your question for us? Okay. What is the only mammal born with horns? Mm. Well, I don't born know. with horns? That's painful. We've had yeah. this, and I think it's seahorse. Uh, I'm just throwing that out there. Is it hold, hold on a second, Chris. Is don't... mammal? I don't know. It may not. The be. only mammal born with horns. Okay, you got por a dolphin. You got a or porpoise. Wouldn't a rhino? Wouldn't a rhino have that qualify? Oh yeah, well, you got a point. I don't even know that a seahorse is a. I think I, I'm going to re <laughs> retract my uh, <laughs> wild blue yonder uh, yonder guess. You went right for the seahorse. <laughs> I mean, you didn't hesitate. You may be right. Go with your gut. <laughs> hey, well, all right. I'm gonna, I'm gonna go. I'm gonna guess. I'm, I'm gonna guess. Uh, I'm gonna guess a goat. Okay. Well, yeah, just, you're gonna say rhino. It's just I'm gonna go right at rhinoceros. Yes. All right. So we got sea, sea, seahorse, goat, and, ry and rhinoceros. That's a law firm. <laughs> <laughs> yes, it is. What's the answer? What's the answer, Chris? The answer is a giraffe. Oh, okay. Yeah. A giraffe. A giraffe's born with horns? Now, look, I got... Yes, they are. And I got... Look, I've been preparing for this morning for this call. So I did some uh, looking online to find a good question to stump you guys. Yeah. And when I came across that question, the image in my mind about a giraffe... Yeah. Bearing a young giraffe. Uh, first of all, it's ter got to be terrible to have that long neck, and then it's got to be born with horns too. I, I know. I, I was thinking the same <laughs> thing. It's, it's got to be born. They drop about six feet from the ground, four to six feet, and then like within minutes, that yeah. long-legged, wobbly 
just born giraffe gets up and is able to walk because they have to be able to start to run away from lions and tigers and things and, and uh, also from yeah, sea, exactly. seahorses. So that's your first, seahorses can be brutal. That's your yeah. first introduction to the world. You have to start running. Where am I? This is not the nursery. Where's my crib? Where's my little dangly thing that hangs over the crib? You're saying run, run for what? Run for your life. You must be my mama. Run! Hey, Chris, thanks for listening. Uh, and uh, you wave at everybody on Butternut and all the streets there and Abilene Christian, all the good areas you guys have with the with the uh, tumbleweeds and the great Mexican food there. All right, you're listening to uh, Trivia Friday on American Family Radio. This show is also known as Learning University. University. Learning University is on the air. We'll be here for another 50 minutes or so with uh, education coming your way. Uh, and uh, if others want, we reset our questions. All right, here is my first question. I, don't, I haven't even gotten a nibble on any of these. Where is the sea route called Drake's Passage? Mm. Folks, you can just look it up. That'll, that'll get the answer for you. Second question, with the ability to travel up to 35 miles per hour, what is the fastest flying insect in the world? And third question, what book of the Bible states that many antichrists have already come into the world? Here's what I've got. First question, what city is overlooked by a large statue named Christ the Redeemer? Picture this giant statue of Jesus with his arms outstretched up on that cliff. Second question, what Philadelphia building appears on the back of the U.S. $100 bill? And I'll add a new one. You know where the Baseball Hall of Fame is, guys, you know, right? Where is it? Cooper's Cooperstown. Yeah, but where is the Basketball Hall of Fame? Don't blurt it out. A little less known, but where is the Basketball Hall of Fame located? Uh, listen, a little more information on the giraffes born with horns. Uh-huh. Uh, giraffes, this is according to Google. Oh, well, which you is can the Bible of the take internet. it to the bank. <clears throat> giraffes are born, but they don't call them plural. Just said giraffe. Giraffe are born with their horns. Uh, however, they lie flat and are not attached to the skull to avoid injury at birth. <clears throat> Well, that was good. I don't, know, I don't know what that means exactly, you know, in the great scheme of life. Right. But uh, that's that's the that's the kind of like those little knobs. They don't have horns like you'd see on, uh, you know, yeah. seahorses. That'll preach. Right yes, there. it will. All right, I'm, I'm going to be thinking about what you said all day long. What your first introduction to life as a baby giraffe, <laughs> <laughs> All right, go ahead. You do your best. Yeah, okay. yep. yes. uh, Jerusalem is by far and away the uh, most mentioned city in the Bible. What's number two? What's the second most mentioned city in the Bible? And it's not Nazareth. That's already been guessed. Number two, what was the most popular name for male babies in the U.S.? And this lasted from 61 to 98. Wow. That many That's years amazing. in a row, this name was number one. U.S. male babies. And finally, uh, my third question, what four countries are make up the United Kingdom, uh, commonly known as the U.K.? What are the four countries that make up the U.K.? Back to the phones, Ed. All right, we go to Virginia, and David is on the line. David, welcome to Trivia Friday. Thank you, gentlemen. Uh, raise them and praise them, because he is holy. Amen. Good, Good word, Amen. David. Where are you calling from, David? Um, I just entered uh, Virginia from the um, Maryland side, the eastern shore. I, I'm a steering wheel holder. Yes, sir. We just did that trip a couple of weeks ago. You're a steering wheel holder? Truck driver. Trucker. Oh, yep. that's, that means trucker? I, I'm guessing so. <laughs> is that right, David? Yes, sir. Okay. Yes, it is. All right, well, but do you live in Virginia? I do. Okay. I do. I live in the, um, just above Richmond. Gotcha. Gotcha. Uh, well, listen. And I'd like for... to do both today. Yeah. Okay. Which question oh, do you want to answer? Go ahead. Which one do you want to answer? Well, I'd like, uh, I think I'll try the, uh, the fastest bug. Okay. Here's the uh, question. Here's the question, David. I thought that was the 
what was the fast he had it, fastest antichrist <laughs> no, you combine those two. Oh, my bad. <laughs> With the ability to travel up to 35 miles per hour, what is the fastest flying insect in the world, David? A dragonfly? It is. It's a dragonfly. Whoa. Wow. <laughs> Why, have you ever been chased down by one of those, David? <laughs> is that how you know? <laughs> well, um, not by one of those, but a, a black fly when I lived in New Hampshire. Um, them things are pretty wicked. Hey, hey. Uh, listen, you and Ed both raised in uh, New Hampshire. Where, whereabouts in New Hampshire? I lived in Sandown, New Hampshire, but um, which is near Derry. Yeah, I'm from uh, Nashua, Nashua, New Hampshire. Okay. You guys had a wicked good time uh, growing up, didn't you? Absolutely, and those black flies are a pain, literally. I heard David so wicked in there. Yeah, and that's why I knew he was from your your your, your, your neck, your neck of, the of the woods. Your yeah. neck of the woods. Hey, so so back to the dragon. <laughs> and that 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 woke me up to the way of the world. <laughs> now, are those the ones that swoop well, down and get people's... Helicopters from them. Oh, what's that? That's probably right about that. With the, I yeah. heard that they, uh, they designed helicopters uh, from them, but I don't know if it's Yeah, you not. may be right. Hey, David, what's your question for us? Uh, my question is, um, it's a hockey question, and um, what do they do with the hockey puck <laughs> before the game? Let me jump in here first. Wait a minute. A guy from New Hampshire asking another guy from New Hampshire a hockey question? I'm shocked by that. <laughs> well, they, they they freeze them. Yes, they do. Now what? They They're freeze the they, when they hit you. Yep, they freeze the hockey pucks. They're made out of, like, vulcanized rubber, I think. And they, they freeze them. I guess so they, they glide more easily on the ice. Cause the teeth to come out a little It'll do that. or what? <laughs> it'll do that. It'll, well, it'll... They, it's other harder. They don't bounce as much. Yeah. Wow. Hey, are, are you a Bruins fan? Uh, I apologize. I am not. I was born in um, Camden, New Jersey, and my mom used to work in Philly. And uh, back in the day, she had uh, season tickets, and uh, I'm a Flyers fan. All right, this call is over. <laughs> <laughs> All right, Brother David. Thanks, Thanks David. Be thank careful you. out there on the road. Yeah, that's right. And thank you for, uh, we do appreciate our truckers for getting all the things we need to buy to the store. So, David, hey, we not, appreciate not it. Not surprisingly, dragonflies, I'm looking them up, uh, looking, you know, about yeah. what. You, you know, they fly, you said 25 to 35 miles an hour. Up to, up to 35. They um, they catch their prey mid-flight. In other yes. words, no, these ones that swoop down and get people's chihuahua. <laughs> walk your chihuahua. I don't think a dragonfly can pick up a chihuahua. But, but I wish it, I it, wish they would sometimes. Yeah, uh, they they that's what you call you know drive-by <laughs> right there right. drive-by drive eating because yeah. they can swoop down uh, or swoop up I guess. Yeah. A dragonfly. Wait, they're not nibbling on flowers and stuff like a sweet no, little no. butterfly. They're carnivorous. No. They uh, prey is, uh, is normally caught midair with the dragonfly using its long legs to catch its quarry. The food will then be carried to a perch. But you know, Wait, I think you, you, know, got you know, know what happens after that. <laughs> I, I, I need to perch. stop right there. We got are, children in the audience. Are you on the eagle page? <laughs> yeah, no. Dragonfly and eagle big stuff. I was reading as I went there and a up, perch up on the cliff where they take tree branches and stuff. And it's not a it's not the way you want it to come to an end. Hey, listen, <laughs> if you're a mosquito, if you if you watch on YouTube some of these videos right. about bugs eating bugs and snakes eating and this <clears> eating that. You, you just you just learn to appreciate the fact right. that we're at the top of the food chain. <laughs> I guess we can just Most be glad there's not a plant that eats yeah. bugs or anything. I guess <laughs> if you're a prey, they eat other insects. So I guess yeah. if you're the prey of a dragonfly, the good thing is you never know what hits you. <laughs> <laughs>
That's right. Boom, 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 boom. That's a long night's note to self. What happened to Bill? Don't allow Tim Bill to, give any, just flying here. to give him give any grief counseling. Yes. I don't know. Whatever, the Bill. We're all he flying was, together and he just disappeared. He's gone. All right. Trivia. <laughs> It gets dark on this program sometimes, folks. Yes. Yeah. All right, we go to Tennessee. Maybe we can save it. And Justice is on the line. Justice, welcome Sir. to Trivia Friday. Hi. How you doing, Justice? Good morning. Good morning. Hey, Justice. Where do you live in Tennessee? Hohenwall. It's Neil Morningsburg. Yes, sir. Hohenwall. Yeah. Been there. Yes. Morningsburg. Good area. Not too far. Uh, about an hour and a half from where we are. David Crockett country. All right, Justice. Uh, you want to ask, answer, or both? Both. Both. Okay, which one do you want to answer? Um, the popular name. Okay, the question I is... Okay, Justice, the question is this. You're going to answer it. What was the most popular male name for babies born in the U.S. between the years 1961 and 1998? And it was an unbroken number one name from 61 to 98. What is that name? Michael. Michael. Nicely yes, done. JJ guessed that correctly. And we had an earlier caller who guessed John. John. And, and his name was Michael. <laughs> Yep. Oh, the oh. irony. Yep. But we're not going to call him out or anything like no. that. No. You know. uh, but it, you got it right, Justice. The Michael was the number one name. in America, So we all know a, there's a bunch of Michaels walking around. You know, my mom wanted to name me Michael. Seriously. Yeah. I was, when I was born in 58, she wanted to name me Michael after the Archangel Michael. Yeah. But my dad said, no, we're naming a firstborn after me. So I'm Edward Michael. Oh, okay. okay. I got go. I got middle name. But you know, to uh, to Michael's point. <coughs> right. Okay, first John, second John, <laughs> third John, exactly. third John. Yeah. All right, Justice. Do you have a question for us? Yes. Okay. Go ahead. I mean, how many countries there are in the world named S T and with S T A N? How many countries in the world end with the letters S T A N? How many stands are there? That's what yes. the question is. Okay. Wow. Sorry, don't say anything, Justice. We're going to talk about ourselves here. I don't. Without looking at the globe, you got Afghanistan, you got Pakistan, you got uh, Kazakhstan. There's yeah. a lot. You never really heard of. Yeah, Stan must mean country in Arabic or something. I, I or don't in, know. In uh, in Indian or something. Uh, like that. I'm I'm just gonna guess ten because there's a bunch of them in the old, all, uh, uh, old Soviet Union. Yeah, yeah. I'm gonna yeah. go higher. I'm gonna say twelve. Just call like one of these game shows. <laughs> you know, right. guess the price of something. Uh, yeah. You say ten. You say twelve. I say eleven. What? Justin, what's the answer? There are seven. Seven? Yeah, there are seven stands. Do you know? Can you name them? Yeah. Go. Afghanistan, Pakistan, Kyrgyzstan, Turkmenistan, Uzbekistan. I can't pronounce the other two. No, you did great. Yeah, well, there's a bunch of them out there. Well, try to pronounce them. Yeah, yeah I love them. This, this audience yeah. will know the difference. Uh, <laughs> justice. They, they won't. Yeah, I love, I like it. I'm on mood too. Okay. All right. I tell you what, Justice, uh, we're going to send you a AFR travel mug for for that. That's a great okay. question. That is a good question. Hey, yeah, you, you and your uh, lifeline. I hear your mom or somebody there in the background. So you hey, guys, Grandma. Grandma, Grandma. Well, you Grandma. enjoyed Grandma. you enjoyed this travel mug. That's yeah, gonna be it's great. stainless steel. It was made in uh, some stand. Yeah, uh, <laughs> I'm looking at the bottom here. It was made in somewhere called Stan. No, I'm kidding. Uh, we're going to uh, send it to you, but we need you to hold on, uh, and Cindy will get your address for us to mail this to you, okay? Thank All you right. very much. You're welcome, Justice. You have a great day. That's Justice in Hohenwall, Tennessee. You're listening to 
Trivia Friday, also known as Learning University. University. Uh, back to the phones, Ed. All right, if we go back to Texas, I guess it's so hot, nobody has anything else to do. They're staying inside, making phone calls. Lois is on the line. Lois, welcome to Trivia Friday. Oh, my goodness, I can't believe I got through. Lois, welcome. Wonderful. Can, can you hear me? We can. Where do you live in Texas? Conroe. Conroe. Yeah, oh, absolutely. Yeah, okay. yeah, we're 88.3 KAFR. And I hear you have a beautiful lake there, right there in Conroe, a huge lake that's so nice. Yes, we do. Yes, well, listen, uh, for those who don't know, it's just north of Houston. <clears throat> Conroe is. All right, well, you want to ask, answer, or both, Lois? Yes, I'm not Okay, well, which question do you want to take a shot at here? The Christ the Redeemer statue? Yes, ma'am. Here's the question. What city is overlooked by a large statue named Christ the Redeemer? Rio de Janeiro. Yes, ma'am. Rio de Janeiro, That's which is Brazil, Brazil. or Argentina. And now Brazil. people, I think Brazil, and now people can, can picture that ginormous statue yeah. of Jesus holding his arms up uh, out to the side, way up on that cliff. And so, it's an iconic, I, uh, iconic picture. world symbol. That's guess, right. Or symbol of uh, Rio de Janeiro. De Janeiro. De Janeiro. That's How did right. you know that, Lois? I just seen uh, pictures of it. Right, right. Well, that sounds yeah, like you right. are pretty good at trivia, yes. Lois. Well, Lois, you didn't have a question for us, correct? No, I sure don't. Well, thank you for listening to AFR there in Conroe, and uh, don't overdo it in the heat. God bless you. Have a great weekend. Thank you, Lois. We don't have time to go to another call. Now we're going to take a gotta take a break. Are you listening to Trivia Friday? Uh, what do we got? A minute. For the music. <clears throat> All right, ten well, seconds. I, hey, I can <clears throat> sing. Hey, I do want to say thank you in all sincerity for people who prayed for us. We didn't have a flat. We didn't have transmission trouble or anything. Drove through twenty-four states, wow, uh, nearly thirty-five hundred miles, and uh, historic and patriotic. And it was just. Did you drive the whole thing, or I drove you? all but two hours. Oh wow! Yeah, I'm a control freak when it comes to. <laughs> I don't want to be a rider in a vehicle. I'd rather be the driver. Yeah. But people can go to JJ Jasper official on Facebook. You don't have to have a friend request. You can just jump on there. JJ Jasper official on Facebook. Scroll back a little bit. You'll see some real funny videos. My daughter Maddie put a video together for each day. So you're like, are you like a football official or? What do you, official, what do you mean? Oh, I don't know. It was just they had to come up with something. J.J. Jasper, official. I didn't even make it. I don't even know how to run the garage door opener. <laughs> I'll leave it to all these IT people who are smart like Ed's son, Tony. Uh, uh, we'll be back in a minute. Stay with us. The views and opinions expressed in this broadcast may not necessarily reflect those of the American Family Association or American Family Radio. 90.5 KTXG Greenville, Dallas. Weeks explores the evidence of the Bible's inspiration and authority through some of the world's most respected biblical scholars. The Bible subjects itself to historical verification. It puts itself at risk of inquiry. From the American Family Association, The God Who Speaks. Available now at thegodwhospeaks.org. This is American Family Radio, a listener-supported ministry of the American Family Association. A thousand are missing following wildfires on the Hawaiian island of Maui. Michael Capone, a missionary working in Maui, says he's never seen destruction like this. I've been in 300 disasters around the world that spent literally the last 15 months in Ukraine. This is Armageddon here. I mean, it is completely wiped out. Communications on the island were ravaged by the fire, making the effort to find survivors and victims more difficult. Legal troubles continue to pile up on former president and GOP frontrunner Donald Trump. David Spunt has the latest from Washington. 
We are having this hearing because of a truth social post made by the former president. It's very short. It reads, if you go after me, I'm coming after you, end quote. Special counsel Jack Smith's team took it as a threat, possibly, to witnesses in the case or even prosecutors. They also believe Trump may talk about evidence in this case publicly. His attorneys say he was just talking about his rivals on the campaign trail, and this is political speech. No matter what Trump meant, Smith asked for a protective order to limit what the former president can say about evidence and witnesses. Judge Tanya Chutkin will ultimately issue a decision to either grant the special counsel's proposal or perhaps something more limited. A public policy analyst says despite hype being generated by Democrats and the media, the Mississippi governor's mansion will not be turning blue. Chad Groening has more. With the decisive Republican primary out of the way, Mississippi Governor Tate Reese can turn his full attention toward November, where he takes on a Democrat opponent with a famous last name. Right in Presley thinks being ready to help us might help him unseat the one-term Republican governor. Jamison Taylor is Director of Policy and Legislative Affairs at AFA Action, a political arm of the American Family Association. Democrats believe that there's an opening with Democrat challenger Brandon Presley. In fact, the Democrat Governors Association just announced that they are putting $750,000 into Presley's campaign. Also, California Governor Gavin Newsom supports Presley. Taylor says Presley is trying to sell voters in Mississippi on the idea of being a champion of the little guy by supporting the expansion of Medicaid and welfare. Presley is not moderate in any way. He's an absolute liberal who's going to run Mississippi just like Joe Biden. So Taylor says it's going to come down to turnout. I believe that Republican turnout is going to be lower in November. Also, though, I think on the other side, African-American voters are not going to be that excited about Brandon Presley. So you're probably going to see reduced turnout all the way around. I believe in the end, Tate Reeves will beat Brandon Presley. I expect Tate Reeves to win by at least 10 points. I'm Chad Groening. A California school board president says they have nothing to hide from the attorney general's office. Chris Woodward explains. Attorney General Rob Bonta has launched a probe of the Chino Valley Unified School District and its policy requiring staff to inform parents about their child's gender identity. School District President Sonia Shaw. We're going to do the right thing. We're going to provide the documents because we have nothing to hide. That's the most beautiful part. AFN is seeking comment from the Office of the Attorney General. Meanwhile, Shaw says the Attorney General has not identified exactly what they are putting Chino in review for, other than the policy. And you have to usually be very specific in these cases. Shaw says the office never served the school district in writing. Instead, the school district was only emailed about the situation. Technically, California law says that documents may be served by mail, and if serving by mail, they add the five days, right? Service by fax or email is only allowed if you get written permission agreeing to fax or email service from the person that's being served. We never gave them permission just to serve it to us through email. If you ask Shaw, the office is doing what it can to try to silence the school district because, as Shaw says, there are a few board majorities in California that are doing the right thing. They don't like that. They're losing control. I'm Chris Woodward. Wholesale prices in the United States picked up in July. The producer price index, which measures inflation before it hits consumers, rose 0.8% last month from July 2022. The latest figure followed a 0.2% year-over-year increase in June. More news online at AFN.net and on the AFN mobile app. I'm Rusty Pugh. Hi, I'm Dr. Jessica Peck host of the Dr. Nurse Mama Show, the home of happy parents and healthy teens on AFR.net. I serve as your expert guide to engage, equip, encourage, and empower you to navigate life's toughest issues with your teens. We explore health impacts and home strategies to create a safe space in an unsafe world. The Dr. Nurse Mama Show on AFR.net. Today's Issues continues on AFR with your host, Tim Wildman, president of the American Family Association. Hey, it's Trivia Friday. On Friday, you know, Monday through Thursday, we're here. We talk about what's happening in our country and in the world, things you need to be aware of and we need to be aware of as, as good citizens. And as the Bible says, salt and light, we need to know what's going on. So we talk about those issues Monday through Thursday. And on Friday, we just uh, do some learning, have some fun. Oh, 
always going to say let her hair down, but that's relative, uh, <laughs> depending on, you know, who you are. Right. Trivia Friday it is on American Family Radio. Tim, Ed, and JJ, and we're about to repeat our questions that have here to four. gone unanswered. Here to four is a word that we're championing here to bring back uh, before it's lost. It's one of the signs of decay in our culture is when you lose words like here to four, you're on the road to no return. It's it's one of the 587 reasons symptoms of it, decay in our country. You lose here to four. Yeah, we we want to make a personal plea to everyone named Michael. <laughs> if you'll take up our cause, because we know there's a lot of you out there. Right. Yes. If if only the Michaels, right. the world, world unite, will help carry the torch. Yes. Please, Michael. <laughs> we know you're listening. Because there's so many of you. Please help us with this campaign. Yes. In case you in case you missed the question and answer last hour, what was the most popular name for male babies in the U.S. between 61 and 1998 consecutively? All those years consecutively, Michael's number one. That's and number one. and we are, uh, J.J.'s appealing to the Michael who called into the show yeah. and answered John to that yeah. question. That's right. So even, even though he... Right. Hey, and then while we're talking about different causes, I'm personally trying to get something going about dried grapes. It's all about raising awareness. So we help dried out. grapes. Dried grapes. It's about raising awareness. That's where we're Ra- starting. Oh, I, uh, I, I'm, took me there. Well, really, Tim? <laughs> well, it took me about seven seconds. I was in seven second delay. Right there, my mind wasn't catching up to JJ's joke, but I should have known it. Raising awareness. Raising dried awareness. grapes. All right, help uh, with that campaign as well. What's your questions, Ed? All right, I have two remaining, folks. Got to get busy. First question: Where is the sea route? called Drake's Passage. And second question, what book of the Bible states that many antichrists have already come into the world? That's hey, the Drake's Passage question, is that like in literature or movies or folklore? I mean, why would somebody, is that well known or is that like it, it is ex- uh, during, or? during the exploration phase uh, okay. of Europe. Okay. And all I'm asking for is what part of the world gotcha. it's uh, gotcha. Passages. All right, go ahead, JJ. 